Brown Sugar, you don't taste it so good anymore. It is an irony of this story that one of the social phenomena of the 20th century, which for 60 years and up to the present has represented the rebellious spirit of several generations, has succumbed to the cancellation culture that is currently rampant with force and speed through the world. The Rolling Stones, whose history is shrouded in censorship and problems, now declare to the world that they don't want trouble and despite the fact that their latest tour is called No Filter, they have decided to go through the self-censorship first. To the repertoire that they will offer their audience in the United States of America, removing from it an iconic song that they have played in each of their more than 2,000 performances since 1969. A song that was even performed live before being recorded and captured in the Sticky Fingers, Sticky Fingers of the year 1971, whose cover incidentally was banned in Spain by Generalissimo Francisco Franco. The song is Brown Sugar, listed on the top 500 songs of all time and now five on the top 100 getter songs of all time, and picked it now one in the ass. This powerful song is lyrics in the one that mix of misogyny, racism, eroticism, drugs and slavery, that is some of the usual topics present in the lyrics of the Rolling Stones as Tittle suffered self-censorship since it was originally called Black Pussy Black Bajina. And now with the new times it seems that, unlike what its chorus says, it no longer tastes so good. In 2019, music producer and activist and Brandon wrote an article in the Chicago Tribune newspaper criticizing Brown Sugar's racist and misogynistic lyrics, asking that the band stop playing it live. In said article, the aforementioned producer stated the following, Imagine everyone in a sold-out stadium gleefully singing a tune that glorifies slavery, rape, and torture, and pedophilia, with the entire chore loved by a billionaire white man from 75 years old gesticulating. It sounds like something out of a dystopian horror movie or a 19th century tale of evil. It is well known that the Rolling Stones behind the might of rebellion near billions have been a thrilling business in the global brand that includes tours, copyrights, publishing rights, recording, machinders, it managing each of these businesses with strictly business nature, that is, managing them through various companies domiciled in the Netherlands for tax reasons, in such a way that the removal of brown sugar from their repertoire would seem more like a business decision than a hypocritical concession to the current political correctness. Well, let's be honest, those of us who have followed the Rolling Stones and know something about the content of their songs, know that if they really wanted not to hurt the sensibilities of the public in this new crystal society, there would have very few songs left to interpret. Mick Jagger's physical flexibility, supported by a rigid and disciplined work mystical, is just the expression of an immoral adaptability that has allowed him and the Rolling Stones to serve as decades in one of the most competitive, dangerous and unstable businesses that exist. And now they've survived because more than playing the golden rule of not doing to others what you don't want them to do to you, they apply the platinum rule of doing what people want them to do to you. In 1978, on the occasion of the release of the Some Girls, Some Girls, Mick Jagger was interviewed and asked about the sexist and racist content of Saddle. In his eponymous song, you can hear the phrase somewhat risky and politically incorrect for these times. Black girls just want to be fucked all night. I just don't have that John Mick Jagger's response to the journalist was that his next book would be even more racist and sexist, and therefore both were to be much more successful than Some Girls. Of course, in those days, that is, in the 70s, that attitude paid dividends, and nobody cared if the sounds could offend any sector of society. In fact, it is curious that the sound Brian Sugar was covered at that time by black artists such as the Great Little Rickards on his or King of Rock and Roll and also by Tiny Turner. But at present, this attitude can represent a negative impact on the economy of those involved. Since a group of people can unite so as not to amplify, publicize or give them financial support. And Mick Jagger, who did not go through the London School of Economics in vain, knows that what is involved in the, the concession that the Rolling Stones make by removing brown sugar from their repertoire is the economy of attention. And the attention is the oxygen of the artist and without that attention they have no way of surviving either as a brand or as a business. And as the popular saying goes, it is better to bend and break and the nature of their game is that they are not the satanic majesties. They are just a bunch of morally flexible old boys greedy for attention and money led by the hand of the devil.